what's going on guys and welcome back to another video that was a really interesting way of opening a video like <laughs> I need to come up with more creative ways to open my video like I can say this I feel like I should I can say the same line over and over but I need like something goofy to do in my intro to make it kind of interesting and different so I'm not boring <laughs> which trust me in day-to-day -day life I can be very boring Netflix Netflix Ooh, more Netflix. <laughs> anyway, let's move on before I get sidetracked. I want to talk about the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus in this video. So, there were more phones they released and more products they released than just these two, but I don't want to bombard one video with everything they released like I did with the Pixel 2 and the 2XL when they released that stuff. Oh, that was a mistake. I should not have done that. Anyway, I'm going to divide it up, and each product is going to get its own independent video. The only reason the S10 and the S10 Plus are in one video is because they're kind of the same. There's not much of a difference between them. Anyway, let's move on. So, the S10 and the S10 Plus are different in three main ways. The camera, the fingerprint sensor, and the display. The fingerprint sensor is a new ultrasonic under-display fingerprint sensor. And like the name suggests, it uses some kind of an ultrasonic wave to map your fingerprint, which is kind of what I thought it was just off the name. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It is mostly a sound wave that maps your fingerprint. So this is supposed to work, apparently this is supposed to work better, faster, and without light, which is what we saw from the other under-display fingerprint sensor, which I believe was on the OnePlus 6T. Yes, it, I believe it was on the OnePlus 6T. So, their fingerprint sensor used a light, a little like, I think a green light? I don't know why I say green, but it, it was a little light that, that shined onto your finger, along with a tiny, tiny little sensor, like a little camera or whatever, that just took an image of your fingerprint. So this, because this is not that, and it's using a system where instead of just taking a picture with a light shining on your finger, it's actually mapping your fingerprint with a sound wave, it's more probably going to be more accurate. And under-display fingerprint sensors are just really cool, okay? I mean, I love my rear-mounted fingerprint sensor on my phone, but... If I had to pick the rear-mounted one or the under-display, I'd pick under-display because under-display fingerprint sensor is just so cool. It's like I'm gonna touch. It's like futuristic. I'm touching the glass to unlock my phone. It's so cool. That's all I have to say about that. It's just really. I just find that really cool. So moving on to the display itself. This is what's called a next-level OLED display, apparently, which is not OLED. Dang it. Next level infinity display. I don't know why I said OLED. I've got so many thoughts rambling around in my mind, sometimes I might use the wrong term. So forgive me if I do. I'm excited and there's a lot of thoughts going on in this bag of nuts and bolts. <laughs> Moving on. It's called next level infinity display. Basically, they just increase the size of the screen. There's nothing new there. But Samsung has managed to avoid using the dreaded notch trend, which ah, I love the notch and I hate it at the same time. On one hand, it I, I kind of like it when I've got when I'm on my home screen. It kind of looks cute, but there's instances where I'm playing games and watching Netflix, and it just drives me crazy. So, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the notch. And yes, I am in the minority in, of people who think the notch is kind of cute. But, I gotta say, I kind of think it's cute. Okay? Anyway, but they managed to avoid using it by putting a little cutout in the display. For the S10, there's a circular cutout because it has one front-facing camera. And for the Plus model, it has kind of an oval-shaped one. I just couldn't, I, I had to do this. This was just too good to pass up. Anyway, 
it has two front-facing cameras, which is why it has an oval-shaped cutout. It's about the only difference. The rear-mounted camera introduces a third lens on top of the two that have already been on Samsung phones, and this third lens is now a wide-angled lens, so you can now fit more people in your photos, fit more things in your photos, which, thumbs up for that. Sometimes you want to take a super wide shot, sometimes you want to take a super close-up, sometimes you don't want to do either, you just want in between, and now you have all three as an option. Thumbs up, Samsung. You could have been adding it before, but you added it now, so I guess thumbs up, but then again, thumbs down, because that's kind of like Apple. Some things other phones have been doing for the past one or two years, and you're only just getting on board. So, I mean, great that it's there, just like the wireless charging when the iPhone added it, but the phones have been doing it for a while, and you're kind of late to the party. So, I mean, again, great it's there, but you're late to the party. So, yeah. Um, I've talked about the fingerprint sensor, the display, and the cameras. I think it's time to move to some of the features. This thing has a feature we've seen before on, I think it was an Honor? I think it was Honor who did it. Anyway, reverse wireless charging. So, if your phone supports wireless charging, and you turn on reverse wireless charging on the S10, the S10 Plus, and the S10e, I don't know if the Fold supports it, but I'll mention more about that in those videos your phone will begin to wirelessly charge from the Galaxy S10 and its internal battery. Which, I mean, not really useful, but, I mean, thumbs up for a cool party trick. I mean, you want to impress your friends? Charge their phone with your phone. I mean, cool party trick, but I can't see it really being useful for anything else. Even if my headphones or any wireless charging accessories I had were compatible with this, I'd probably still opt to charge them. So, like, if these supported wireless charging, I'd probably still opt to plug them in because the battery life is good and I, har I don't really charge them that often. I mean, I hardly use these things. I mean, that's probably a bad thing to say about something I paid almost $400 for, but, I mean, when I'm at home, I don't use them much. And when I do use them, I'll use them for a couple hours at a time. So, or if that. So... I could usually get a week out of these things, because there's days where I might not use them, there's days where I might use them super intense, and then I'll charge them, they top up quick, and it's like I never noticed. So, yeah. It, reverse wireless charging, mostly a party trick. The other, fe the other thing about them is their RAM and storage. So you can start, I think, at 8 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage on the S10, and the S10, the S10 model cannot go up this high, but the S10 Plus can, to 12 gigabytes of RAM and 1 terabyte of internal memory. 1 terabyte of built-in memory! With a and you can get, I think you can get 500 gigabyte SD cards, and the Note 9 had like a 500 gigabyte option, and then you can get a 5 gig, 100 gigabyte SD card, and before you know it, one terabyte of wireless chart, one terabyte of, one terabyte of internal storage. I almost say wireless charging. Again, so many thoughts. I might use the wrong term. Sometimes my mind moves faster than my mouth, and I say the wrong thing. Anyway, one terabyte built in. This means that you could, if you wanted to, probably get one point. Five terabytes of storage on your phone. 1.5 terabytes. That, like, blows my mind, because that is so much storage. If you manage to fill up that much storage on your phone, you probably got a problem, because that is so much storage. No one would ever use all of that. If I were to get that, it would be solely so that I could say, oh yeah, my phone's got one terabyte of storage. Boom. That is like the only reason I can see buying something with one terabyte. Now, if you're a business guy, if you're in, if you're a businessman or if you do YouTube and you save a lot of footage, especially raw footage, especially if it's shot in 4K, <laughs> 
one terabyte might be useful because it means you can store some of that footage or a lot of documents on your phone, making it really great to be a business powerhouse. So, I mean, jokes aside, one terabyte of storage is actually useful for business, for business, I guess. That's about the only reason. The average consumer will more than likely never reach that. But then again, the average consumer will probably also migrate to an iPhone. Yes, that is a joke about iSheep. That is not meant to be taken seriously. Not everyone is an iSheep. Moving on. Um, so, they both, both the S10 and the S10 Plus support that wireless charging thing. Um, I think that's all I really want to talk about with the S10 and the S10 Plus. Just, that's insane. Oh, one more thing. The price. Thousand dollars. Yoo-hoo. Thousand dollar phone. Again, no surprise there. But, I mean, I feel that Samsung is doing a better job at justifying a thousand dollars than price tag than Apple is. So, I, I guess I could live with Samsung charging a thousand dollars for their phone, especially if the features justify the price, which I definitely say Samsung features justify the price tag. So, that has been my opinion on the Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. Stay tuned for future videos on the other products that Samsung released. Coming soon, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and peace out.